I'm joined now by Steve Lonigan, a Ted Cruz supporter who once ran against another presidential candidate. New Chris Christie, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Chris. So here you just heard what Peter had to say about this being a state that in many ways uh, caters to Donald Trump. It's his constituency. Mm. We always knew that this wasn't going to be the sweet spot for Ted Cruz. Where do you think you are? Where do you think you can end up? I think we will outperform everybody's expectations. And I understand that both pollsters and the campaign has downplayed the senator's expectations. Everyone does not expect Senator Cruz to win. And they didn't even think he'd come in the top three. But in the most recent overnight polls, he's moving up steadily neck and neck with Marco Rubio. This is consistent with the way Ted Cruz has operated in politics, his consistency, his leadership, staying on message. Um, and, and we're going to do very, very well tomorrow. Donald Trump, I think, will underperform very, because I don't think he has a natural consistency. I'm not sure who his consistency is. But in that recent assault that you played on uh, Jeb Bush, who's only at about 5% in the polls, you have to wonder why he'd be attacking Jeb Bush, who's not a threat. And that's a personal issue. I, I call it irrational, um, inconsistent. He's attacking Jeb Bush, calling him a stiff, the name calling. I, I don't think New Hampshire voters like that name calling thing. You know, after your guy won Iowa, Marco Rubio got a lot of attention. Exactly. And in fact, there were some people on your campaign that were joking that bronze is the new gold. The senator said that. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Ha but having said that, <laughs> do you think in a, in a way uh, the attention on Marco Rubio and the pressure on him and people going after him at the debate worked to your advantage? Uh, I think it worked to our advantage. But again, the senator performed extraordinary in that debate. His messaging in that first hour and going through the debate was remarkable, and that's going to resonate on Tuesday. But I'm going to be very curious to see when Senator Cruz outproduces expectations and comes in in a first, second, third place, if he's going to get the you same think he kind of press. Do a top I think we can pull an upset victory tomorrow. I do. I absolutely From do. From where? I, because we have a phenomenal ground game. You know, we have 40 headquarters set up around the state of New Jersey. We have a dorm building in the Chester, old Chester College, packed with volunteers who are living in dorm rooms uh, overnight, staying here day after day, working the ground game. Never underestimate Ted Cruz. Many of his Having opponents said have that, found going that out. to these, going to various town halls, going to events for a number of candidates. One of the things that surprised me how much New Hampshire residents have paid attention to is people who are here and people who are not. People who have really made a play and people who continue to do the retail politics. Your guys, there, there was a stretch here for 61 days when he didn't even come to New Hampshire. Do, do you think that's hurt him? Iowa, you know, the campaigns are extraordinarily demanding. You have limited resources and extraordinary demands. I think in the last couple of months, we've realized that New Hampshire is much more in favor of Ted Cruz than people realize. Our people come back going door to door. I saw this yesterday. 60, 100 people coming back from knocking on doors, and they're energized. They're pumped up. They love the reception they're getting at people's doors. Um, I feel very good about New Hampshire. I know I feel very, very good about South Carolina. Steve Lonigan, thank Thanks you so much, me. and good luck going forward.